Okay, it's time to start to think about the top box and where we're going to put all our electronics. So the main electronic is obviously our inverter. This is a 800 watt, 24 volt pure sine wave inverter. So this is what I will be um, putting in here. Now, obviously, I can just put it on the floor of the box. The problem is then I don't have very much space, floor space left. I mean, um, you know, you, you end up, I'd, I'd almost have to like stack stuff on top of the inverter to generate more uh, usable space. And there's a few other things that need to go in here. So I think the r better move is to mount the inverter sideways like that. Then that still leaves me a ton of, of space here to mount um, some of the other circuitry that I have going on. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll first figure out a way to mount this. Unfortunately, there's this ribbing here. Um, although actually, you know what, if I mount it on the front of the box, yeah, I think if I mount it on the front of the box, um, there isn't as much ribbing on the front check and almost flush mount the inverter. Um, yeah, that's what I'll do. So I'll put the inverter on the front of the box and then use this backspace for some of the other electronics I have to deal with. So let me mount this. Um, I also got to mount my kill switch. Um, figure out a good place for the kill switch. Um, 12 volt circuit. Um, and then uh, we'll have to discuss what we're going to do on the top here. We've got these flaps here, which I think I'm going to try and keep and maybe put some switches or the USBs or the or the 110 volt stuff in there. Um, so uh, yeah, let me mount some stuff and I'll get back to you. So I have a few things situated. I, did, I put the main power cutoff on the side. Um, and it's here because that's where the, the battery wire is going to come up from. And then I will, you know, wire it into the, 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 the main on off switch. Um, the inverter is mounted. A couple bolts from the outside. It's sitting there. In the roof here, um, these are three switches. And I put them, I put them in here like this. Um, it's not a great use of this space, but I also didn't want to really cut out these ribs and So I just decided to make up three switches there, you know one for the 12 volt one for the 110 volt and one for the meter and Then those go under there and are protected And on this side I ins I cut out the long rib that went this way to make more room And then I installed the 12 volt circuits here. So there's a 12 volt there and here is USB and that's in there and then I just pop this cap out temporarily to it's a bit of a strike. There we go. So 12 volt circuit will be under there, and then your your switches will be under this side. I think the meter is gonna go literally right here in the top. It's the perfect size. Um, I should have one, I should have it right here. Yep. That'll fit perfectly in there. And that's nice and, um, yeah, I should be able to get that. It's gonna be a little tight on the wires. I'm gonna have to think about the wires before I shove it in there. But once it's in and wired, it'll that'll fit beautifully right there. Um, so that's where the meter will go. And um, so I gotta figure out where to put the 110s. I was, I could, I could fit like a single 110 next to the 12 volt circuit, um, hidden under here. And I might do that. Um, I don't know how, I mean, yeah, maybe I'll do that. I mean, I don't know if I need more than one 110 volt um, receptacle. I could always plug a splitter in here or a, yeah, maybe I, maybe I will put a, maybe I will put the 110 right there. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's the, the design so far. Okay, so I've put a few more things in. Um, let's start on the top here. I have installed the meter. It fit beautifully in there, and that was actually a nice cut. Um, so that's, that's installed. Um, I think I already showed you the, the uh, 12 volt circuits and the USB on that side, and all the switches on this side. And then on the inside, 
Um, I have a fan installed. Um, I cut that out and I'll probably add some sort of shield onto that. Um, I've mounted the shunt. Shunt will sit there and these are wires coming from the meter that will go to the shunt. And of course the cutoff switch. When you start to put things together, I suggest you install your biggest components in place like this inverter because it's very easy to run into interference when you like close the lid and if you don't have your components in place things like these 12 volt circuits could easily hit the um, the inverter. I got lucky and that's just clearing but uh, these are things you need to think about as you're as you're you know as you close this thing up everything needs to occupy the same space so um, you know put your biggest things like the inverter in place and then keep an eye on your available space, especially when you have a, like an opening and closing lid. So quick tip for you when you're building these solar generators. It would be nice to be able to turn on the inverter um, from outside the case from your own switch. But cheaper inverters do not have a hookup for an external switch. Some of the fancy inverters have actually have some pins where you can hook up your own switch. These cheaper ones do not. However, we can totally wire our own switch onto this switch and run, run a wire out externally and just bridge this switch with our switch um, to be able to turn this on and off externally. This switch doesn't actually carry any current. Um, all it does is flip an internal relay. So any switch we want, any small switch with some small wiring will be more than enough to do the same thing as this switch. So, and if you bridge the two wires that are internal, this switch will work or your external switch will work. Both switches will still work. So let me open it up and show you what I mean. Okay, so there's the switch and you can see it's got just these puny little cables on it. So if we just bridge onto this switch with our own switch, we'll be able to externally turn on and off this um, inverter. So let me do that and I'll show you. Okay, so I have bridged on this external connection and I just ran it out a front vent and I, made a con I used a connector so that I can plug in my wiring from the solar generator and still be able to unplug this and remove the inverter if I need to. But there you can just see the internal wire and my wire are both just now soldered onto the two pins of the switch. So if you throw the switch here, it, the inverter will turn on, or if you throw a switch that's connected to this, it'll turn on the inverter. So now we are able to externally turn on this inverter. Okay, so our solar generator is basically done. The only thing left is the solar charge controller and how I'm going to charge it with solar, which I'll deal with later. But everything else is basically complete. Um, it's swing around here you can see I have a power switch here and there are actually five little holes cut out here those are actually vent holes since the fan is on that side blowing across that's where the hot air will will vent out um, so let me throw on the main switch and nothing major will happen because I haven't turned on the side switches um, we can open this panel here and there are side switches I think I haven't labeled them yet but I think the first one is the meter which it is you can see the meter is turned on and it's saying 27.6 uh, volts so that's good this second one I believe is the fan and the 12 volt circuit let me test yes I don't know if you can hear but the fan the fan is now blowing bring you around this side that fan over there is now spinning and this 12 volt circuit is live uh, 12 volt circuit is live it's rigged onto the fan control so the fan turns on the 12 volt circuit and the fan because the fan wanted 12 volts so I just I just wired them together the last switch is for the USBs now turn that switch and then the USBs you can see are active. So that's the USBs. That is where I finally decided to put my AC outlet. Um, I only have one AC outlet and it's right there and that is the AC switch to turn on the inverter. 
It's a little bit awkward of a placement and I only have one of them. But I think what I'll do is I might have a short extension cord that it splits out to like three plugs or something like that that I can put inside the case because there's extra room inside the case. I I just wanted a nice neat place to put the AC circuit and you know rather than drill any more holes on the outside or uh, you know I just decided that's where I'm putting the AC circuit and then this is the switch for the inverter. Let me turn off let me turn off um, all the 12 volt circuitry. Um, now if I, let me come in here, the inverter is off right now, um, I don't know if you can see, the inverter is off right now, let me flip this switch here, you can see I just turned on the inverter circuit and it's putting out 125 volts, um, yeah so this switch turns on the inverter and powers up this AC outlet. This AC outlet, and let me turn off the inverter. Um, I have I have just a regular computer wall plug that's plugged into the inverter and that comes up and goes to that switch. I soldered it into a um, receptacle plug um, and then covered it all in hot glue. That is not OSHA approved but that is how I did it. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, but it is all wired correctly, and I did um, use my continuity tester to check that each pin of the uh, of the AC output went to the correct pin on this plug before I soldered in the connections. But yeah, so the AC is all wired and plugs right into the inverter. Um, that's the 12 volt. Um, that's a 12 volt converter because the begin my battery is 24 volts. So my 24 volts runs through that 12 volt converter and then to that 12 volt outlet and to the fan. This is the removable connection to turn on the inverter. I, so if I need to take the inverter out, I can just unplug um, and then plug back in at any time. And there's the, uh, there's the MC5 that comes from the battery underneath. And then that goes up to the switch and then uh, from the switch into the inverter um, and then every, all the other um, and then everything else and then I run, a, I run a 24 volt wire over to that Wago block and then all my other circuits plug into that Wago block that goes up to all those switches um, which then in turn turns on the meter, turns on the USB, turns on the, the uh, 12 volt etc. So that, that Wago has everything other than the inverter running through it. Even the 12 volt circuit is powered through that Wago. Um, but yeah, I mean that's the general overview. The nice thing about this is now that it's you know all built it all you know it closes up into a nice form factor and has a handle and rolls on wheels so you can just pull it behind you like that. It's um, yeah, it works out quite in quite a nice form factor. It's probably 35, 40 pounds. Um, it's heavy, but not crazy. I could easily lift that into you know my car or anything like that. But then when I get to where I need it, I can just roll it around on its wheels. And um, you know that's a pretty cool form factor. And again, if I need to service the battery, I can I can unplug the MC5 here, and then I can undo the plugs here, and then pull the MC5 out. And there's the battery ready to be ready to be serviced. Um, and I have my, my secondary balance leads and everything under here, so um, I can work on the battery with ease and um, it's also incredibly easy to you know, put it all back together. I just have to feed the MC5 back through the bottom. And then I can lock this up, plug the MC5 into the MC5 that goes to the main power switch 
and this thing is hot again. I can throw main power, turn on the meter, and uh, we're operational. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this thing. I am gonna capacity test it and I do need to figure out my uh, tool, uh, my solar charge controller circuitry. But uh, you know, for, for uh, you know, a couple hours of wiring, I think this is a huge success.